tonight. The psalmist said he's great and greatly to be praised. Amen. Our praise shouldn't just be praise. It should be great praise. He's great and greatly to be praised. It's not just a regular praise. This is great praise. He's greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. 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 I feel the presence of the Lord in this place tonight. Amen. 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 I'm thankful for what I feel here in this house. Amen. One more time before we go any further, would you just praise him right where you're at? Just thank you for his goodness, his mercy, his blessings. Hallelujah, Lord. We love you. We worship you. We praise you, Lord. You're great. You're mighty. There's nobody like you. There's nobody that compares to you. There's nobody greater than you, Lord. Yes, Jesus. We've come to this place to worship and to praise you. We've come to this place to magnify you, great God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My goodness, I feel the presence of the Lord here. Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 1. I thought y'all weren't going to let me preach there for a minute. I thought y'all were just going to get carried away. Amen. That would have been all right with me. Y'all know I like that. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1, familiar passage of Scripture. As we're getting there, let me just say thank you again for allowing us to be here. We enjoy ourselves and just have fun here. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1, love. Bishop and Sister Sarton, and uh, how many of you love your pastor, your bishop? Amen. Amen. We always have a good time with them and appreciate them. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. This scripture is so familiar to you, uh, but don't let it become too familiar that, that you miss what the Lord is, is telling us through the writer of Hebrews. I, I want to lift something from this tonight, and um, I know it's familiar to you, but just give me a couple of minutes here tonight. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's the evidence. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. And I want to talk to you about the unseen side of faith, the unseen side of faith. Would you lift your hands to the Lord? Lord, I love you. Thank you for your word. I pray that you speak to us tonight. Lord, allow us to be sensitive, Lord, to your spirit. Do what you want to do in this place, Lord. Let your spirit have free course and free reign. Speak to every individual in this house through your word as only you can. Do whatever you want to do, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you give the Lord one more big hand clap of praise? Amen. You can be seated. Thank you for standing. Quickly here, I don't believe I have to establish this point uh, very much here at this church. This church knows it, but faith is more than just believing in something. Faith, the Bible tells us in James that faith without works or faith without action is dead. That faith is a verb. Faith is something more than just saying, I believe, but it's acting on what you believe. It's doing something with what you believe. Um, and so the writer of Hebrews says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the substance. It's the thing you can feel. It's the thing you can see of things that are hoped for, those things that you can't see. He says, it's the evidence of things not seen. It's the tangible side of things that are not seen. It's um, acting on what you believe even though you can't see the answer yet. It's um, acting on what God has spoken even though the promise hasn't been fulfilled yet. That faith is more than just saying I believe, but faith is doing something with what you believe. That it's not enough just to believe that prayer works. If you really have faith that prayer works, you'll pray. Is that that makes sense. That's kind of an easy one to use. But so this is what faith is. And so now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. That uh, there are things that are working that you and I cannot see yet. And uh, I, I was thinking on this verse a couple of weeks ago and meditating on it and, and uh, thinking about the, the unseen. That 
that God operates in an arena that you and I can't see, that oftentimes we are living by faith. There's evidence that we have faith that God is working, but we're having faith that he's working on something that we cannot see that we cannot see it coming to pass yet. We don't know how it's going to happen yet. And in meditating on this verse of Scripture and on this thought, I, I thought of Abraham when the Lord told Abraham to take Isaac up the mountain and to sacrifice Isaac upon the mountain. That is a tremendous act of faith that Abraham is setting out to sacrifice the promised one, the one that he was promised was going to be his son, the one that he was promised that many nations were going to come from, and the the Lord asked him to take Isaac and to bring him up Mount Moriah and bring him to the altar and to sacrifice him there. That The Lord spoke to him and said, bring him up. And so this is his faith. He's acting on it. But the unseen side of faith is Abraham doesn't know it. But on the other side of a mountain, there's a ram that's making his way up the mountain, if you will. That on the unseen side that Abraham couldn't see, there's a ram that's what's wandering around close by the altar. That in the moment that the Lord speaks to Abraham, right before Abraham kills Isaac on the altar, the Lord stops him and, and he gets his attention. And then Abraham sees a ram that's stuck in a thicket. That God operates on the unseen side. That Abraham, his ev the evidence of his faith was just him going up the mountain. But there was an unseen side to his faith faith that he could not see, that he could not hear, that he could not feel, but it did not mean God was not working even though he couldn't see it, but there was a ram that was going to be stuck in a thicket to, that was going to become the sacrifice, and I've come night, tonight to talk to some people and tell you, you haven't seen an answer yet, and you haven't seen anything happen yet, but God always operates on the unseen side of faith. You're being faithful to him. You're serving him. I'm telling you, I believe there's some rams that are making their way up the other side of the mountain. You can't see it right now. You can't feel it right now. It doesn't feel like anything's happening, but you being in the house tonight is evidence that you're believing God is working. You. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? That God works on the unseen side, that things that you can't see it and you can't understand it. It's yeah, I, I've just begun going through in my mind through the scripture, just going through it where God would work on the unseen side of situations that while Jacob believes that Joseph is dead for over 20 years, Joseph is in Egypt preparing and getting things ready, and he's going to save the nation of Israel. Israel's going to come from being just a small family of about 70 people to over a million people. But while Jacob believes Joseph is dead, Joseph is in Egypt getting it ready. He couldn't see it. He couldn't understand it. But the day came that his sons came home and said, hey, Dad, Joseph is still alive. He's over there. That's the unseen side of faith where Jacob couldn't see it. He couldn't understand it. All he could do was simply trust God and walk with him. And as long as he walked with him, there came a day where he saw what God was doing on the unseen side of faith. Let me tell you, I'm believing right here at the West Bank, we're going to see what God is doing on the unseen side of faith. You've been faithful. You've been living for him. But I'm believing we're going to see God do some things that you and I can't see right now. We can't understand right now. We can't wrap our mind around it right now. But there's coming a day where God is going to show us the other side of faith, that side that that we can't see right now, that side that we can't understand right now. I, I was thinking on it, and I, I thought about David, and I know we talk about David a lot, but that's a pretty good fellow to talk about, and I thought about him as he's a shepherd boy, and he's watching after sheep, and he's learning what it is to protect sheep, and he's out there, and He's just practicing with that sling, you know. I, 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 I sincerely don't believe while David was practicing with that sling that he thought, one day I'm going to kill a giant with this thing. I, don't, I just don't think that. I, now, if you think different, that's fine. You can think that. But I don't think that was what he was thinking when he was praying. I think his thought was, I'm going to protect my flock with this. I, I'm going to look out. I'm going to take care of a lion and a bear. I'm a, I've got all that. I'm ready for that. I'm ready for a wolf to come. I'm prepared. But he's out there practicing. He's just getting ready. He's preparing himself. 
But meanwhile, in a brook, there's five stones. Water's just washing over them and preparing them. And one of them's got Goliath's name on it. And a day is going to come where David's going to go down to that brook. He's going to reach down in that water and he's going to pick up five smooth stones. David didn't know that day was coming, but God knew that day was coming. David couldn't see what was going to happen that day, but God knew what was going to happen that day. And I've come to tell you, God is preparing things for some people in this house. You don't even know the day is coming. But when the day comes, you're going to find out God was working on the unseen side of this thing. God was working on the unseen side of what's going on right now. God was preparing me. God was getting me ready. He was working in some areas I didn't even know were going to happen. But now I see what I couldn't see then. Now I see what I couldn't see back then. Now I see it. Is this all right tonight? I, I really feel like I'm supposed to talk to somebody's faith tonight and let you know just because you hadn't seen anything yet doesn't mean God's not working. Just because it hasn't happened yet doesn't mean God's not working. Just because it hadn't worked out the way you thought it ought to work out doesn't mean God's not doing it. God operates on the unseen side of faith. It's my job to operate on the seen side. It's my job to do what I can do. It's my job to do my little part that I can do. But God operates on the arena that cannot be seen. He operates in the arena that you and I cannot see right now. He operates in a world that you and I can't comprehend. He operates in a world that's beyond my ability to see. Oh, I feel him in this place right now. I feel his presence. If you're you're like me, the the enemy or even your own flesh will say, why are you doing what you're doing? You had not seen any results yet. You haven't seen it happen yet. But faith is the evidence of things not seen. I tell you, I like to see quick results. Uh, I do. I like quick results. I don't mean just with the Lord. I mean with everything. Like with a diet. Whew. Unfortunately, with a diet, I get a lot of unseen results. <laughs> Amen. I see these guys walk around with all these muscles, muscles on top of muscles. And uh, I, got, I go to the gym. Camille made fun of me because a while back I joined the gym. And uh, I, I went. And then a few months later I went. Now, wait, let me tell you the reason I went. They wouldn't let you cancel it over the phone. They wouldn't let you cancel your membership on the Internet. You had to go in to cancel it. So that was my second trip to that gym. (laughs) None of y'all have ever done that before, you bunch of fitness freaks. I can see you just. (laughs) Because I want to see some results quick. I wanted one trip to do it. <laughs> this is all you're going to get right here, baby. That was me flexing, if you couldn't tell. I've decided I'm going to focus on spiritual things. <laughs> but we want quick results, we want to see results. You know, you go to that gym for the first time, and I know some of y'all, y'all are better at this and work out and all that, but, but you work at that weight, and you look in that mirror, and you say, you know what, I think I see a little something right there. Yeah. It's working. I want to see results. I want to see something happen. Sometimes with the Lord, we got to understand it's not going to happen the first time I pray about it, the second time I pray about it, the third time I pray about it. That doesn't mean that it's not happening. God always operates on the unseen side of faith. If It wouldn't be faith if you always saw it immediately happen. It's faith that's the evidence of things that are not seen yet. It's faith that steps out and says, I'm going to obey God even though I haven't seen anything happen yet. I'm going to be obedient to his word even though I haven't seen anything happen yet. I've got enough faith to act on what I know. I've got enough faith to act on his word. I don't have to see it happen yet. I'm just going to step out and say, Lord, I believe you. It's the evidence of things not seen. It's the evidence. You're here tonight because you still believe. 
believe God is working in some situations that you can't see it happening yet. You haven't seen anything happen yet, but you're believing God is working. Friend, that's where God operates. That's where he works. He works in the unseen. He works where you and I cannot see. There's a story in the Bible where the people of God, they, they hadn't been doing good, they hadn't been doing right, and, but they're in a battle and they, they call for Elisha. They're, they're, they're in a bind, they're surrounded, they have no water to drink, and uh, I don't have to get into all the backstory. I don't really want to focus on that as much as I want to focus on what happened. They're thirsty, they're without water, and they're about to be in a battle, they're worried, they're concerned about what's going to happen, and so they, they call for Elisha. And Elisha shows up, and these kings are telling him, we, we need a word from the Lord, we need some help, we're in a bind, we don't know what to do. And these people, they're thirsty, they've called the man because they're thirsty. And they call the man of God, and he shows up, and he says, Thus saith the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. Now, I don't know if you've ever been real thirsty before, but when you're real thirsty, one of the last things you want to do is get out in the desert and start digging a ditch. I don't like digging when I'm not thirsty. <laughs> Digging turns into work real quick. And the man of God says, I want you to go out into that valley and make the valley. And then he, he says it like this. Make the valley full of ditches. Man, not half full, not a fourth full, not three fourths. I want you to make the valley full of ditches. I want you to get out there and start digging. And when you think you're done digging, go dig another ditch. And when you think you're done digging that one, go dig another one. And when you think you're done with that one, go dig another one. I want you to dig until everywhere you look, there's nothing but ditches everywhere. Everywhere you look. That sounds crazy. You know what sounds even more crazy? What he says after that. For thus saith the Lord. Look at what he said. Look at, look, pay, pay, pay very careful. Make the valley full of ditches. For thus saith the Lord, ye shall not see. Now we're talking about a God that operates on the unseen side of faith. He said, get out there and start digging. And while you're digging, you're not going to see wind. And then he said, neither shall ye see rain. You know what's real encouraging when you're digging a ditch for rain? It's for a little breeze to blow by. Or while you're digging for a little drop of water to hit you on top of the head. That gives you a little bit more faith to keep on digging. But the prophet said, get out there and start digging, and you're not going to see anything while you're digging. But that doesn't mean the answer's not on the way. He said, for thus saith the Lord, ye shall not see wind, neither shall ye see rain. Yet that valley shall be filled with water. He said if you'll get out there and start digging, God's operating somewhere that you cannot see. You can't feel it. You can't see it. But if you'll get out there in faith and you'll start digging, God is going to come through. And God is going to fill every place that you've prepared for him. God is going to fill every place that you said, come on, Lord, I need you to move. I've come tonight to tell you, you may not see any rain. You may not feel any wind. But that doesn't mean God's not working off. Somewhere off in the distance there was a storm. Somewhere off in the distance there was something happening. Somewhere off in the distance there was water falling. It wasn't falling where they were at, but it was headed their way. I've come to tell somebody tonight, you may not have seen anything yet. You may not have heard anything yet, but that doesn't mean the rain hasn't already fallen. While they were digging, there were storm clouds letting water out. While they were preparing, there was rain on the way. While they were preparing, there was water that was about to flow. They were 
weren't going to see it. They weren't going to hear it until it came. Let me tell somebody, you're going to wake up and all of a sudden you're going to see what you've been praying for. You're going to see the unseen side of faith. Said, yet the valley shall be filled with water. Woo. When they went to bed that night, all they'd been doing is digging. And when they went to bed that night, they were grimy. Sand was in their collar and everywhere else probably. They were miserable and they were more thirsty than when they started. But that didn't mean the rain wasn't coming. They were more tired than when they started. But that didn't mean the rain wasn't coming. Some of you tonight, you feel a little bit weary, and you say, man, I've been doing this a while. I feel more tired than I was when I started. I got aches in my body I didn't have before when I started. But that doesn't mean the rain isn't coming. When the word of the Lord says it's going to happen, you better go ahead and start digging because it's going to happen. You better understand that God works on the unseen side of faith. And while they went to sleep aching, and while they went to sleep thirsty, the Lord was sending water their way. Because when they wake up in the morning, it's not going to be dry ditches anymore. But the the whole valley is going to be full of water. Woo. And then the, the Bible says, the, Elisha says, he says, this is a light thing in the sight of the Lord. Talking about them getting something to drink. He says, this is a light thing. Man, I'm telling you what, Brother Alec, you might be a one-man show, but you're a go-getter up there. I'm telling you what. <laughs> Last, Wednesday night I saw him up there y'all ever seen he looked like a Muppet <laughs> sorry <laughs> you're doing a great job <laughs> we got to show some love to some people that do stuff behind the scenes y'all I, this, this is uh, anyway I, I'll preach a whole other message if y'all aren't careful now, where was I? Oh, I remember. You thought I forgot, but I didn't. <laughs> he said, it's but a light thing. He said, it's an easy thing. He said, he's not only going to give you something to drink, but the very water he gives you to drink, he's going to use that to deliver the Moabites into your hands. You were just praying for water. But you didn't realize that when you were praying to the God that operates on the unseen side, you weren't just praying for water. That's your victory coming as well. He said, you're not just going to get something to drink, but when God gets done, you're going to have victory when it's over. You're just not going to be sustained, but God's going to give you victory when it's over. I've come to tell you today, if you have faith to believe that God is working on the unseen side, he always does more than you think he's doing on the unseen side. He always does more than you think he's doing on the unseen side. And when they woke up that day, they didn't just wake up to water, they woke up to victory. They didn't just wake up to something to drink, they woke up to victory. I've come to tell somebody you're not just going to wake up to something to drink, you're going to wake up to victory. One day your faith. Huh. I'm not just waking up to something to drink, I'm going to wake up to victory. Nah, you, can read the, you can read the story and check me out, but I'm telling you, the Lord's going to use what he gave them to sustain them for victory. If I had time tonight, I'd preach just that, but i got to keep talking to you about the unseen because I feel like the Lord told me there's some people here that need to hear me very clearly tonight that God operates on the unseen side, that it's faith that we believe that God is working in areas that we can't see, that God is working, that God is doing things, that Woo. You remember the story after Jesus is resurrected and he comes, he visits the disciples, but Thomas isn't there. And Thomas says, I'm glad you guys saw him. You can believe what you want to believe. He says, but except I shall see his hands. 
and the prints of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side where they suck him with a spear and blood and water came forth. Unless I see it for myself, unless I place my finger into the prints in his hand, and unless I put my hand into the side that was split open, he says, I will not believe. Eight days after Thomas makes that statement to the rest of the disciples, Jesus comes into the room where they're at while the door is shut. And he stands in the room and he looks at Thomas. <laughs> He hadn't been talking to the other disciples. They hadn't given him a report and said, Thomas said, he ain't going to believe unless he sees. <laughs> no, no, no. Jesus just showed up and looked right at Thomas and said, Thomas, reach, reach hither thy finger and behold my hands. and Reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side. And be not faithless, but believing. I don't know, maybe he did, but the Bible doesn't say that Thomas touched the prince in his hand. And it doesn't say that Thomas put his hand into his side. Maybe he did, but it doesn't say that. It just said that Thomas answered when Jesus said, go ahead and touch the print. Go ahead and put your hand into my side. The Bible just says that Thomas answered and said, my Lord and my God. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> But I, I like that, but I like what Jesus said after that. He said, Thomas, because you have seen me, because you've seen me with your eyes, you've believed. But he said, blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Woo. He said there's a special blessing. For those that haven't seen me, but believe me, there's a special blessing. For those that haven't seen the nail prints, but believe, there's a special blessing. For those that haven't seen me yet, but believe, I've come tonight to talk to some people. You may not have seen him yet, but you believe. There's a blessing on the unseen side of faith. I can't say that I've seen him. If he wants me to see me, that's fine. I can't find too many accounts after he's ascended that he shows himself to too many people. I can find about three. Stephen, as he's dying, sees him. John on the Isle of Patmos sees him. And Paul gets knocked off of his beast and hears a voice and says that he saw him. Other than that, I can't find too many other people that saw him after he ascended. But I will tell you this. Blessed are they that have not seen but yet believe. Blessed are they that can say, I don't I don't have to see you, Lord, to believe you. I don't have to see it to believe. I believe your word. I believe what you speak. I believe what you said is true. Woo. I feel the Holy Ghost here tonight. Huh. Y'all okay if we go a little bit deeper, a little further into this? Yeah, if you're not okay, you'll be all right. You can make it. <laughs> Just hang in there. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, now back to Hebrews 11, verse 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. Can we go to a 7? Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 7. By faith Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet. When Noah got the warning from God that a flood was coming, it never rained before. The fountains of the deep had never broken up before. God gave him a warning. There's something coming on this earth that nobody's ever seen before, but it doesn't mean that it's not coming. Noah, get to build in your ark because there's something that's coming on the earth that nobody's ever seen before, but it doesn't mean that it's not coming. And the Bible says that Noah moved with fear 
He got in a hurry. He said, I'm going to build an ark. I'm going to obey the plan. He prepared an ark to the saving of his family. By doing this, the Bible says that he condemned the world. But he was responding to God speaking something and saying something's coming on the earth that nobody's ever seen yet. But you better get ready because it's coming. You better get your family ready because it's coming. And friend, a hundred and something years later, it came. The flood came. The fountains of the deep broke up. It didn't matter that nobody had never seen it before. When God said what hasn't been seen is coming, you better get ready because it's coming. When God says nobody's ever seen it like this, but it's coming, you better obey. You better hear his word. You better respond to his word because when God says it's coming, And I know nobody's seen it yet, but my Bible still says, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. I don't care if nobody's ever seen it yet. God said it's coming, friend. It's coming to pass. God spoke it. It's going to happen. We better prepare. We better get ready for the unseen side of faith to come to pass. We better prepare ourselves because there's an unseen thing coming. Nobody's ever seen it before. But the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet them. In Woo. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. You can stay standing. I'm, I'm, I'm wrapping up. People can say you're crazy. People can look at you like you fell out of a tree. I'm sure they looked at Noah like he was crazy. I'm sure all of that stuff happened. But it didn't change the fact that what God had spoken, that nobody would seen yet, was coming on the earth. And I'm telling you, I don't care how they ridicule. I don't care how they make fun. It doesn't matter. If God has spoken it, it's coming to pass. I don't care what they say. I don't care what the skeptic says. I choose to believe God's word over the skeptic. I choose to believe God's word over the naysayer. I choose to believe God's word over the one saying, well, I ain't ever seen anything like that before. You're crazy to believe that. Call me crazy. Call me whatever you want to call me. But I believe that God operates on the unseen side of faith, that it takes faith to say, yes, I believe. He's going to do things that haven't been seen. I believe he's going to work. Oh. Ah. So this is what I want us to do tonight. We're going to come as a church family, and we're going to come with the evidence of things not seen. We're going to come in faith, saying, I haven't seen it yet. Maybe it's a miracle. Maybe it's something in your family. Maybe it's just the coming of the Lord. And you're saying, I haven't seen it yet, but I'm believing it's coming. I'm believing it's going to happen. I don't care if nobody's seen it happen yet. I believe I'm going to see it happen. I don't. They can say revival's never coming to my family, but I'm believing the revival's coming to my family. They can say whatever they want to say about my church, but I believe revival's coming to my church. They can talk about me, that's fine. But I believe in a God that operates on the unseen side of faith. Does anybody have enough faith tonight to say, I believe that God is working on the unseen side, that God is preparing things that I can't see, that God is working in circumstances that I I can't see, that I can't understand. Woo. I want us to come. Come on, let's come in faith. I want you to come tonight believing that God is working on the unseen side. Those areas you can't see. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I want you to lift your hands, and I want you to thank Him for being the God that works where you can't see Him, the God that works 
where you can't understand Him. The God that works beyond your ability to see. The God that works beyond your ability to comprehend. Lord, I thank you that you work on the unseen side. That even though I haven't seen anything yet, that doesn't mean you're not working. Just because I haven't seen it happen yet doesn't mean you're not working. Just because I haven't seen it come to pass yet doesn't mean it's not coming to pass. Just because it hasn't happened yet. I feel faith here tonight. God. That's it. If it's appropriate, reach over to the person next to you. There's faith in this building. Join up with that person next to you and let your faith flow to them. Help, reach out and help them right now. The Holy Ghost is in this place. Reach over to the person next to you and begin to pray with them. The Holy Ghost is here right now to help, to strengthen. Yes, Jesus. That's it. Let the Holy Ghost flow through you. That's it. Let that faith flow. Yes, faith. Faith in the unseen. Oh, faith is the evidence of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. Yes, it's the substance. It's the evidence. That's faith right there. Your lifted hands are faith. Your prayer is faith. That's faith. Your